Hi guys, it's Ishan from FTC Team 9794 Wizards.exe, here with you this, with the second part of our odometry spellbook, where we're going to be covering how to build these odometers to put on your GoBuilda Strafer Kit drivetrain so that you can get accurate motions during autonomous and teleop um, in FTC. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is building these odometers, and then in future videos, we're actually going to wire them and program them uh, so you can get accurate motions. Let's jump right into building them. You'll need all the parts linked in the video description below. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and start off with the odometry holder piece that is 3D printed. So this piece, we printed in white, uh, is what's going to be holding the odometer. And one thing to note is you're going to need to print two of this piece in the normal uh, way that is uploaded online. And then there's also a mirror version of this part. And you're going to need to print one in the mirror version of the part. Um, so the first step is to take the two Actobotics 3 8 inch outer diameter bearings, quarter inch inner diameter bearings, and press them into the insides of this odometry piece. So what you want to do is just push them in like this into the holes on the odometry holder. So you're going to do that for both sides. Um, you may have to scrape out some of the parts of this inner hole in order to get it to fit in. Um, but once it's in, it should be a pretty tight fit and it shouldn't fall out. Um, so the next part is to get your wheel ready. So we're going to take our Omni wheel, the small Omni wheel that you can find in the description below, and the 3D printed Omni wheel insert piece. And effectively, what we're doing is this Omni wheel when it ships out, it ships with an out wrench, which we'll need, but it ships out with a four millimeter bore in the center of it. And if you look at the Omni wheel, it's actually comprised of two different parts. It's got this Omni wheel, this wheel, and then the second type of part is in the middle. It's got this hub that is held in by these four screws. So using this Allen wrench, and you can either use a hex wrench or a set of needle nose pliers should work just fine. You can actually remove these screws so then we can replace that hub with this new hub that has a quarter inch D-bore on it and we can use that to attach to an actobotic shaft. So I'm going to remove these screws. So now that you got the screws and the nuts taken out of the wheel, the wheel should just come apart like this. You can take out the wheel, you see the first wheel, then you have the center hub, and then you have the second wheel. One cool thing about the center hub is it's actually got set screws in it to prevent a shaft of four millimeters from sliding back and forth. We're actually gonna remove one of these set screws and use it um, on the hub that we created for the 3D printed part for the Actobotics. So take your 3D printed Omni wheel hub and actually just thread this screw into there. And so it will be a little bit of a tight fit. You will have to put a little bit of pressure, um, but once it starts going in, it should just continue in all the way. Uh, you don't want it to go in all the way. You just want it to be in there a little bit. Um, so then the threads are started. We don't want to actually be closing down on this screw until we have the wheel assembly all together. So now that we got the entire wheel assembly taken apart, we're going to use the four 18 millimeter M2 screws that are in the description for McMaster car. And these screws are actually going to be used to put the wheel back together. Uh, we can't use these screws that come with the wheel because they are a little bit too long. And since we want it to be able to fit this in a very small area, the entire odometry mechanism in a small area, uh, we're going to have to get rid of these screws and replace them with the 18 millimeter screws. So go ahead, put those in the bag. You can keep them later. Um, uh, use them later if you need, but we're going to use these uh, 18 millimeter screws. And one of the nice things about these screws is they actually use the same hex pattern as the Allen wrench that comes in the bag. So we can just use the Allen wrench from the bag um, and put it all together. So you can see I put the four screws in. Next step is to put this Omni uh, wheel insert, I think that's what it's called, uh, in between the two wheels. So just Slide it onto there. It should just go on pretty easily. And then you want to put the last wheel on. One thing to note about putting the last wheel is you want the rollers to alternate. So if I put it on like this, you can see that the rollers are adjacent to each other. We don't want that. So I'm going to flip around the wheel. 
And now, when I put them on, you can see that the rollers alternate. And that allows us to get full rolling coverage along the entire wheel. Um, so once that's all together, you can just use the nuts that came with the wheel and tighten them on to um, put back together the wheel. So go ahead and tighten the nuts, and then uh, we'll put them into the odometry mechanism. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the base of our encoder on this odometer. And so what this is going to require is the odometry bases. So these pieces that come with each odometer uh, or each encoder, you're going to have to put this piece onto um, the odometry pod. Uh, you're also going to need um, the button head screws. These are... Uh, M2.5 8 millimeter screws, and you're also going to need the M2.5 nylon lock nuts. These are both from McMaster, and they're, again, they're linked in the video description. So go ahead and grab two of each the screw and the nut. And go ahead and what we're going to do is we're actually going to screw this piece onto here and it doesn't matter how you orient it there's only two screw holes which you can actually use um, so just get it on there uh, one of the nice things again is the allen wrench that came with the wheel uh, works in these screws that we've ordered um, so what you can do is just pop the screws in and then get them through the holes you might have to twist them a little bit to get them to go through um, but once they go into the holes, uh, you want to get both of them in there, and then you want to add the nuts onto the other side. Um, one of the things is we don't want to tighten this all the way until uh, later, because what we're going to want to do is center this entire piece. This piece has a lot of wiggle room, even when you put two screws in. We're going to want to center this entire piece on the shaft so that um, we get accurate encoder readings. So go ahead and screw these in, but make sure to keep it loose. So now you can see that this thing wiggles around a little bit, which is great. Um, that way we can center it around the shaft uh, later on. So now we're going to grab the one and a half inch, uh, quarter inch D shaft from Actobotics. Um, and this is what we're going to be putting through the bearings to hold our wheel on the um, to hold our wheel on this odometry pot. You will also need the two spacers that are on the Thingiverse site. Uh, I just 3D printed them because they're really easy to 3D print and they work really well because of that. So how this will work is this thick spacer is going to go closest to this bearing here. Then the wheel is going to be there, and then the thin spacer is going to go on the side without the encoder. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention earlier is you want to make sure that you have the encoder on the side that's thicker. So like this thickness, you want to make sure you have the encoder on that side. And that thickness was made specifically so that we could fit the encoder uh, right here without it getting hit by anything else. Uh, these encoders are very delicate, so we don't want to put any additional strain or forces on it that we don't have to. So what we're going to do is this might take some trial and error. Um, we're going to take the, the spacer, the thick spacer, and I like to put it right in between the nuts. That way it holds, um, that way it's held in there by gravity. And then I slide this into here. And I haven't worried about the short spacer yet. We'll get to that next. I then put the shaft through the bearing and it goes through. And now Part of the uh, part of getting this shaft all the way through is lining up the flat side of the shaft with the flat side of the hub that we made on the uh, made for the wheel. So I'm gonna just try to push it through and get it lined up. So now that I've got it lined up, it got all the way through. Um, and then I don't want it to go all the way through, so I'm just gonna take my needle nose and push it out a little bit just to get it. So then I have some space to put this spacer right here. So let me just push it out a little bit. 
All right, so now that I've got it pushed out a little bit, I can take the spacer and I might have to widen this up a little bit. And I'm gonna try to just slide it in there. And one of the things that I found useful was using this Allen wrench to get it into that little crack between the wheel and the uh, bearing. So once I get the spacer near where it needs to go, I push the shaft so then it presses up on the spacer. And then what I can do is I can take my little Allen wrench and just slowly get it lined up with the shaft. So once it's lined up with the shaft, I can put, uh, it's not lined up. So once I get it lined up with the shaft, So once you get the spacer, just push the shaft all the way through, and you'll see you want it to be just flush with this white part. I got it pushed all the way through, and now you'll see that these screws are actually hitting the wheel. And that's perfectly fine. That's because we just haven't tightened them yet. So in your encoder kit, you should have received one of these guys. So one of these guys is a centering tool. Uh, that goes on the D-shaft, and it just holds this entire piece in centered. So now what I can do is I can put my Allen wrench in. I can use the uh, needle nose pliers and just tighten down uh, this encoder. And do that for both screws. So make sure you get these nuts all the way tight. Uh, one thing is it might feel like it's tight, but the nut's not actually tight and it's just the screw that's tight on the plastic. So make sure you get it as tight as you can because you do not want to be replacing this out later on during the competition season. So once you do that, you're not going to need the spacer anymore and you can just put it back in the bag. Uh, since you have three encoders that you're building, uh, what we did was we ordered the bulk version where you get one spacer for every 100 encoders that you buy, and it'll come with that, that way you save some costs. So that's what the basic part of it is. Now we're gonna install the encoder on top. You can put away all the wheels and the Allen wrench, and just keep these in the baggie on the side in case you have to use any of these parts later on. Uh, and make sure you keep that Allen wrench in a safe place because it's integral to building this entire system. So now, we're gonna be installing the actual encoder. So you can see, I've got my encoder sensors, I've got my encoder disks. I'm going to need the spacer piece, which is included in the bulk, and I'm also going to need the cover cap for the encoder. So first, let's go ahead and install, uh, let's get the spacer out uh, because we don't want to be wasting any time while any of these three elements are exposed. Uh, dust can actually ruin these elements and they're very delicate, so we don't want to keep them out for very long. Um, so when you're doing this process, make sure your hands are clean. So um, I recommend washing your hands uh, or doing something to make sure that they don't have any grime or dirt on them. And then um, you can go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the um, sensors from the ESD bag. And you'll see that the sensors come on like a plate like this. Uh, and this makes it super easy to keep them all together, but it also makes it super easy to damage all of them together. Uh, so make sure that you keep uh, this in a very safe space. So you're going to take the plate and what you're going to do is you're going to break off one sensor. And so this will be a pretty hard task. You'll have to put quite a bit of force to, put, uh, to break it off. Uh, but make sure that you're putting the force uh, on the sensor, uh, not on any other parts of the board. You also don't want to touch this copper piece right here, or this metal square right here. That's the actual sensor on the board, and you don't want to get any dart on that. 
So make sure you stay away from there. That's why I knocked it off using the connector and not the sensor part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this down on the black piece that we installed earlier. And one of the parts of this is you'll see that there's two black pegs. Um, we want these two small holes to line up with those two black pegs. So I'm going to do that. And you'll notice that there's two orientations which you can get that to happen. Uh, you can either have the connector facing up or the connector facing down. And I want the connector facing up, that way it doesn't get caught on any components on the ground. Since this is going to be very close to the ground the, uh, during a match or while it's driving. So I'm going to put back all of my sensors, that way uh, they don't get damaged. And I can put these to the side as I won't need them for this encoder. The next step is to install the disk. So these disks uh, are probably the most delicate part of the encoder. Uh, they have a bunch of lines on them, which the sensor reads, and it's able to tell how far uh, the robot has moved, uh, or how much this thing has rotated based off of whether it's reading a line or not. So these are the encoder disks that you're going to need. And so we're going to take them out. So uh, carefully remove them from the case. So you only need one per encoder. Um, make sure to keep the others safe. And try not to hit this outer disk, because if you get dust on that, that could actually ruin what encoder counts you get. You might have to touch it a little bit, but just touch it from the edge very softly and then hold it by the metal pieces if you can. I'm going to put the cover right back on because I don't want to get dust on any of the other encoders that I have. And I'm going to put this away in a safe place, that way we don't damage them. So I'm going to take this disc and it's going to go on the shaft. And you'll see that it's got a thick part and a thin part for the metal. The thick part's going to go down onto the shaft. So I can just put that on there like that. And you're just going to slowly press it on. Uh, you just need it to stay there. You don't need to actually get it down the shaft. That's what this tool is for. This tool allows you to press the um, disc down to the right height um, without putting pressure to damage the encoder disc. So all you do is you just push down. And now the encoder disc is exactly the correct distance away from the sensor. So once you do that, put the cover on, make sure that it clicks in place. So I got it to click in place. Two clicks means that it's in. And now your encoder is built. Now, one thing that you want to do is because you made sure that the encoder is the correct distance away from the sensor, we want to make sure that the shaft does not move up and down like this. So you're going to need the Allen wrench from the wheel again. So grab the Allen wrench. That's just going to go to tighten the set screw that we put inside the wheel earlier. So just get it in there and tighten the set screw as much as you can. Uh, don't put too much force, but just get it uh, tightening it until you feel uh, resistance. That way, um, it holds the shaft in place and prevents it from sliding forward and backwards. So once you feel resistance, you just take the Allen wrench out. You won't be needing that again. And then, there you have it. There's your encoder wheel. So you've got your Omni wheel right here. It's got on an Actobotic shaft, and it's got the E8 T encoder on it. Um, and using that, you can uh, put these onto the robot. So let's dive right into putting these onto the robot. So now what we're going to do is we're going to install these odometers onto the GoBuilda Schaefer Kit drivetrain uh, like we have here. So flip the Schaefer Kit drivetrain so then it's upside down um, and you've got the openings of the channels on the bottom um, and or facing up. And these odometers are actually designed so then they just fit right into the channels and we can mount them anywhere inside these channels. So just something to note is you'll need three of these odometers. Um, you'll need two that are not mirrored, and then one that is mirrored. So take the two that are not mirrored, and you're going to take it so then um, the encoders are always facing the inside of the robot, the center of the robot. So take one of the ones that's not mirrored, put it on it, so then the encoder is facing the center of the robot, and take the other one that's not, that is mirrored, 
and put it so then the encoder is facing the inside of the robot. Um, you'll notice that there's a hole on the side of this odometry holder. And that's actually how we're going to mount these odometry holders onto uh, the channel, the go build a channel. So we've got these 55 millimeter screws that are linked in the description below. Uh, and these will actually go onto the odometer. And this odometry pod will actually just rotate on this screw. And that'll allow us to, even if there's a bump um, on the field or something like that, we'll still be able to track the exact position of where our robot is because uh, it's able to maintain contact. Um, and we'll use a rubber band to force it onto the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount these uh, onto the robot. So take, uh, take the one with the hole on the left when the... Uh, with the hole on the right when the encoder is facing you and you're actually going to put that onto if this is the back of your robot um, this is the left or this is the right side of your robot because the robot is upside down so the one with the hole on the right uh, on the the one with the hole on the right when the encoder is facing you and it's oriented like this uh, is going to go on the right side of the robot so what we're going to do is we're actually going to mount this right in the middle of our drivetrain. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install this odometer. And so these channels that we installed as extra to the Schaefer kit last time is what we're going to be ins uh, installing them into. So they're just going to fit into right here. And again, we want the wheel closest to the outside and the encoder closest to the inside of the robot or the center of the robot. And we're actually going to use this hole right here. Uh, I'm going to put the screw in. So this odometer just goes in. You put the screw through and it should go all the way in. And you can see exactly which hole I'm using. It's um, the one adjacent to the big hole in the center of the channel. Next, we're gonna need um, M4 lock nuts in order to hold uh, this odometer in place and uh, to prevent the screw from falling out. Um, this will be difficult. And one thing to note is you will need to have your motors in the correct orientation so that the encoder, uh, there's enough space to fit this nut. So if there's not enough space, just unscrew the four screws next to the motor and flip the motor around. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take this nut and you're just gonna hold it up in front of the screw. Ah, I dropped it, let me get another one. So you're just gonna hold it up in front of the screw and you're gonna take the screw and you're just gonna hand tighten it on right now. We just wanna get the screw on the nut, so then, um, so then we can tighten the screw. So once you get the screw or the nut on the screw, uh, you can then take a combination wrench or a hex wrench, hold the nut in place, and an Allen wrench to tighten the screw. So when you're tightening it, you want it to be fairly tight, but you still want the odometer to be able to rotate around the axis of the screw. So tighten it as much as you can so then the odometer doesn't shift forward and backwards like this. So now that the odometer is tight, you can see I tighten it a little bit too much. I'm just going to loosen it out a little bit so then I can actually rotate it. So there we go. I've got it tightened so it doesn't slide back and forth, but it still rotates and it rotates fairly easily. Um, and so that's how we're going to set up the odometer. So what you're going to need to do is install one of these odometers on the other side of the robot and it's going to be the mirrored version. And then the last odometer is actually going to go on the back of the robot. And you can just put it anywhere inside the channel. Just keep it at the same level as you put this odometer in terms of height. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back after you finish it. So now we're going to actually spring load these, so then they're always applying a force onto the ground, and uh, when they hit a bump, they'll just go over the bump and then return back to touching the ground. So what we use to spring load them is we actually use rubber bands. These rubber bands have been super nice because uh, we can replace them out easily. They're relatively cheap. Um, so we can actually just, I put a hole in the odometer that you can just put the rubber band through. And the nice thing about building a channel is we can actually just attach the rubber band to some holes on the top of the channel. So I'm going to get this rubber band threaded through the channel. 
and so I put it through two holes on the channel and so now it's going through the channel and it's going through the encoder and I can just use a knot I use the square knot uh, but any knot will work to tie the rubber band off and so now it's spring, spring loaded so you can see that as it gets pushed back it will want to go forward um, one thing that we are going to do is we're actually going to add a screw to prevent it from going too far forward so in this hole right here I'm just going to put a 10 millimeter or 7 millimeter screw uh, 11 millimeter screw whichever one you have some extras of uh, and I'm just gonna uh, actually you can yeah 10 millimeter or 11 millimeter is recommended 8 millimeter will work just tighten the screw on and this will prevent the entire mechanism from going too far forward so just tighten that screw and so now as you can see this entire thing just springs back and forth if it gets caught like that uh, and that's a repeated problem you can use some needle nose pliers just to separate and bend the channel out a little bit so then it doesn't get caught up like that you can also use another one of your uh, 55 millimeter screws uh, and you can just use that as a way to keep the rubber band super tight so I'm actually going to go ahead and do that so here's the 55 millimeter screw what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to put it in the adjacent screw hole uh, next to the where the odometry pod was mounted and then put it under the rubber bands so I can just put it in there and now when I spring it backwards it's got a lot more force on it and it's not going to stay stuck it will also have gravity to help it out um, so your odometer should not get stuck um, under any circumstances with this system. So this is what it should look like when you've got all three encoders installed. You can see all the encoders face the center um, and you can see that we added that third screw to help redirect uh, the rubber band so then the rubber band's more snappy. Also I found that we can actually loosen up the screw that the encoder is pivot, the odometer is pivoting on, uh, even though that it's in a slotted screw, it can wiggle back and forth. But the rubber band's going to hold it nicely in place. So now, if we flip over the chassis, uh, we'll see that it's all touching the ground. So that's going to conclude our video. Hopefully, you were able to install all your odometers onto the drivetrain chassis. Uh, you can see when I move it around, uh, the odometers are actually moving, meaning that it would be tracking the robot's actual location on the field and make sure to do that at home when you're trying out your uh, odom uh, odometry system. Um, thank you to GoBuilder and US Digital for sponsoring this video. Without them we would not have been able to create this and we hope you learned something from it. Please make sure to like and subscribe this, to this YouTube channel and if you have any questions send us an email at wizards.exe at gmail.com. In the next part, we're going to look at wiring this entire system, putting the expansion hub on, putting batteries on, putting the phone on, and we're also going to take a look at programming in future videos. We look forward to seeing you soon.